welcome again to the podcast of Restorative Justice. Uh, Lulis Sigala and myself, Santiago Quiroz, we're really, really privileged to be sitting right now with uh, Michael Ledwich, uh, an institution in restorative justice. He is right now in Toluca and uh, he has uh, agreed to give us this little interview for the podcast of restorative justice. Uh, Mike, thank you very much. Um, My and I want to ask you, what is, for people that listen to this podcast, what is the theory of the bifurcation of justice or the bifurcation of justice theory? Um, it is something that explains why we have these feelings of um, needing to hurt people that have hurt us. Because there's a danger if you're trying to explain restorative justice to people, they struggle with handling that because they also feel they want to punish and hurt people. So it's important that we take, we understand and acknowledge the fact that people have these feelings. Because if someone hurts someone you care about, you want to hurt them. Yes. Because that's human nature. And what's happened is that we've evolved over millions of years. And we've got a whole set of um, things hardwired into our brain. We've got a fight and flight syndrome. We've got a fear of the unknown, which is why all horror films about things we can't see, beneath the surface of the ocean, in the mist, in the dark. And once you get to see the horror thing, it's usually a cult figure like Freddy Krueger. You know, all the aliens are suddenly not so scary. So we've got things that are in here. We appear to have two solutions to justice. Yes. One for enemies and one for people we care about. And the one for enemies, you know, if you're a hunter-gatherer, you can't live in the same area as someone else because the resources would mean people would starve. So you drive the enemy away. You drive another group away with threats or even rewards. Here, take a dead antelope and go. Yes. So the punitive system is designed for enemies, and it's hardwired into everybody. But the restorative system is the way that we would always respond if it was someone we cared about. Because in a hunter-gatherer group, you couldn't afford to lose anyone. So if yes. someone behaves badly, you don't then want to drive them away or kill them or get rid of them because the group relies on the next generation of youngsters or you know the behaviour of everyone in the group. So without thinking about it, the way you want to deal with it is you want them to admit what they've done, you want them to come to understand the harm they've done to other people in the group, mm -hmm. you want them to have the chance to negotiate with the people they've hurt what they should do to make amends, Yes. you want them to make amends, not do it again, and rebuild the damaged relationships. Now that approach to justice is hardwired into us, just the same as the punitive one. And the snag is the punitive one is only effective until something goes wrong. Until someone commits a crime, the threat is working. As soon as they commit the crime and you apply punishment, it's a crime accelerant. Yes. Yeah. So there is a place for the punitive system at one level because actually it creates a threat that prevents some behaviour. But it's not the way of dealing with bad behaviour. And there may be times when you need a mixture. You need someone actually to spend some time in prison, but you need to heal everyone, including the offender and the victims and everyone else. Because at some stage they're going to have to come out. Yes. And you don't want it to be a war. So does that answer your question? Yeah, that answers okay. the question perfectly. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, just so that you know, I'm going to add some subtitles uh, when I edit it because yeah. people, uh, to, for people that speak Spanish to understand. Okay. Fine. Uh, we have another question by Lulis, my colleague. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for my bad English. <laughs> I'm sorry about but, my um, non-existent Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, can you tell us? Um, what is the restorative justice? Um, that's, that's not easy to explain. All I can say is it's a set of principles. It's, it, in terms of the process, there's like an umbrella with a whole load of different ways of using a restorative process with people. Mediation, conferencing, uh, sentencing circles, peer mediation in schools. So there's a whole sort of range of things. But it, it really can be something as simple as a conversation. So instead of saying, Oi, don't do that, yes. or else I'll do this to you, which is like a threat punishment thing, the question would be, Well, can you tell me what you were doing there? Have you thought how that affects little Jimmy over there? And you, you ask questions and, and have a conversation, which is more about understanding the impact of your behaviour on other people than about threatening them. To not do it. 
are out. And so therefore, it's building internal controls because you are making people um, more emotionally aware, more emotionally literate, and you are getting them to be genuinely accountable for the harm they've done to people as opposed to breaking a rule. Um, and it's, it's a very wide spectrum. And if you look at any situation where you have a punitive option, don't do this or else, or even the, the because in my mind, the reward system, if you say, if you do this, I'll give you that, you're also saying, if you don't do this, your punishment is you won't get that. So it's, it's like a parrot, it's like an uh, extended line and goes into the reward thing. And that's different from if someone does something well, someone acknowledging it, that's different. Exactly. But if someone says, if you do this, I'll give you that, that is part of the punishment paradigm. Yeah? Because, and if you look at behavior in, in the workplace, for instance, um, McGregor, Hertzberg, Mayo have looked at, at motivation, morale, team stuff, and there is very much the punitive language built into all the negative stuff. And this surprising amount of the restorative language and restorative mindset of, of accountability to your, your work colleagues and trying to work hard for them is more of a restorative model. Yes. So it's a, a strange um, parallel right the way through society at lots of different levels. And the more you use it with people, the more they engage with the restorative side of their nature. Because oh. actually it's part of all of us. Because it's hardwired to us. Oh, yeah, yeah. In us. Thank goodness. Thank so you. We think with psychopaths it's not. So if you're actually genuinely a psychopath who has no connection with other humans, it's not so easy. Um, but I've got people that I've trained to use RJ that are working and have worked in the most violent prisons. Um, we've got, um, in England, we've got two psychiatric hospitals that are for effectively prisons, which is Broadmoor and Rampton. Mm -hmm. And they are where the, the really unpleasant multiple murder and head cases go to. And that's where the really crazy ones go. <laughs> and they're using restorative practice to help behavior manage in that environment, and it works. Even though they are some of the most nasty people you could possibly meet, because they, and they can't help doing it. It's fascinating. Anyway, thank you, sorry. thank you. That's a very uh, deep uh, and uh, insightful answer. And um, it leaves me very little things to ask you. Uh, the, the format of our podcast is very short, so that people can uh, get... Uh, information, just basic yeah. information, and then look for more information by themselves. If they wanted to contact you, where could they do it? Um, well, I live in England. But like, um, what page or well, I, mail? I, I, I've got an email address that you can use if if you wanted to. Uh, my concern would be is then I've got hundreds of emails to answer. <laughs> yes. um, what are a web page? Well, um, one of the other things I do is I write papers of what. It's happened to our public services. So the two, I've got www.restorativetraining.co.uk. All right. So that's my business website for the training, RJ Training, and that's got some stuff on it. My damaged public services one is www.targetsandbullying.org. Targets and bullying. Targets and bullying. But that tries to explain why you can't the effect and why you can't performance measure a complex system like a simple system and there's an academic field that says you can't but if you use it use targets incorrectly which nearly every target is you cause damage that actually is horrible well thank you for for the two web pages that you just given us <coughs> and the time that you, you have given us we know that you have many things to do here in toluca yeah. uh Lulis and i we wanted to talk to you and, and interview you and, and you've given us a chance and we thank you for it and should i explain the jacket as a final thing yeah i think uh it people that are, <laughs> that are listening <laughs> the po to the podcast yeah. will appreciate to know why you're wearing this jacket i wore this jacket for this the for the keynote speech at the conference because I wanted to remind the people who are trying to run mediations that actually we are giving power back to other people. Therefore, I wanted to wear something that wasn't too formal, that didn't show that I had a lot of power. Yes. Because if we're trying to run meetings, actually you're giving power back to the people who the meeting is for. Yes. And therefore, by wearing something a bit silly, perhaps I was passing a message. So. Uh, very well explained, and the people were like looking at it in the conference, and and, and uh, Mike Levich 
he in the ex explained it immediately in the beginning of a conference. You even began your conference with that and giving people back power to solve their, 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 their stuff. So I think that's a very powerful message that you're dressed in that message. <laughs> and so I thank you very much and thank everyone who listens to this uh, Restorative Justice podcast. Lulis, gracias. Uh, Michael, My pleasure. thank you very much. Until the next uh, podcast. Bye. Yeah.